Hi everyone, this is the second uh, lesson for, um, for proof. And it starts talking about implication first. And really, you know when you write out like an equation, say you were doing, I don't know, 3x plus 4 is 10, so then you say 3x is 6, and you say x is 2. Really, you should use these little like, you should use these symbols at the side and you should decide, can I get back up to where I started from? So, well, we never do, but some textbooks do, but we never do. And to be fair, it's not actually on, it's not on the, been on the exam papers where we've looked at if we've used the right implication sign. So anyway, right, let's have a look at these then. So the first one says that P implies Q. So if P is true, then Q must always be true. So P implies Q. This one, so I'm read, um, I'm going to read the, the direction of the arrow, means that Q implies P. So if Q is always is true, then P is always true. You can say that P is implied by Q, but I kind of I'd probably read it as Q implies P just to make it follow on from what the first one was, so you're following the, the direction of the arrow. Uh, so if you've got both ends, it means that they're absolutely the same. There's no possible way that they're not. So that shows that they're equivalent. Right, so let's have a look then. Okay. So if 2x plus 1 is 9, we know that x is 4. So that's fine. And if I started with x is 4, I could get to 2x plus 1 is 9. So that kind of gets a, an equivalent one. Right. So like the reason for it, let me show you. So we could say then, so as 2x plus 1 is 9, 2x is 8, x is 4. So these lines are implied by the one above it. But also, if I started off with, with x is 4, I could double it to get 8, and then I could add on 1 to get 9. So these lines are also implied by the ones before them. So if it works both ways, I'm okay. Right, so, so let's have a think about this one then. Um, if I've got x is 4, I could square it and I could get 16. Now that works, because if I square 4, all, all I get is 16, and that's fine. But if I go from the other way, I get plus or minus 4. I don't get exactly the same, so which would mean that if I start with 4, or x is 4, I could get to x squared is 16, but if I started with x squared is 16, I could either get to 4, or I could get to minus 4, and that's the thing, really, that I could get. X is minus 4. So kind of going that way doesn't work. Okay. So it says when solving equations, each statement should be equivalent. Um, so let's have a look at this one then. So going from the first line to the second line, it works going down. But if I went up, I could have a plus or minus. So for this one here, if I went up, I should have a plus or minus root x plus 6. So because I don't have that, it doesn't work both ways. So that one works that way. Going to the next line, I can rearrange it to get the quadratic, but I can also go back and get the other one. So that works both ways. 
for the next line down, I can factorise it so it works going down, but also I could expand the brackets and go back to just that one specific solution. So that works both ways. With the next line, I can solve it, or I could go back and put it in factors. So that works that both ways. Now, we don't really use it in textbooks, but they're not really being in on our papers to, to push that specific type of notation. So, so there we go. So everybody knows that therefore is the three dots, but did you know that if you put the dots upside down, it's because. Yeah. There you go. All right, where's my um, board mover on it? There we go. Oh, wow, so we've got some questions there to have a go at. Oh, this one, this is, this is proper random. I'll do this one in class. There's no worries there about that. Right, I'm going to stop it there because there was another little bit that I have to do in this lesson. Okay, right, I'll see you later.